Moon Base Alpha status report 892 days after leaving Earth's orbit. Dr. Helena Russell recording. We have just passed through a space storm. Duration, 42 days. Our sensors have picked up a medium-sized planet in the north quadrant. Commander Koenig is exploring the planet. The surface is rich in vegetation. It is our hope that it might prove habitable. Maya? Sensor reading? Surface temperature, 73 degrees. Atmosphere, breathable. All right, let's put it down. OK. Oxygen leak, life support system. Take over, Tony. All right. Four hours until critical level. Do we have boat? No. You go back to Alpha, pick up another eagle. Maya and I will have completed our survey by the time you get back. Check. Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Go ahead. Eagle One has developed a malfunction and is returning to Alpha. Maya and I will continue our survey until Tony returns and picks us up. Anything we can do, Commander? Just stay in touch. We'll contact you every 30 minutes to make sure you're all right. We'll talk to you in half an hour. Out. They're edible. Great. Alpha. Come in, Alpha. Murderer! You have had your last communication with Alpha. Who are you? We are the judges of Lutan. What is the crime we... You destroyed life forms on this planet. We picked a flower and ate some berries. That is your crime. You killed members of our society. We didn't realize... But we are merciful even to criminals of such magnitude. Please believe us, if we committed a crime, it was out of ignorance. You will be given a chance to prove your innocent intent. These are your adversaries. They, too, are criminals from space who violated our laws. They, too, claim innocence due to ignorance. Your innocence will be tested in the crucible of combat. The survivors will be given their freedom. If we break a branch or injure a tree, they'll condemn us without a chance. Yeah, we better not get hungry before this is over. Come on.
make good arrowheads. Arrowheads? Yeah, American Indians. Use arrows and bows. Oh. We could probably make a bow, but we need some string. I bet we can make a spear. Must we kill them? Maya, yes, if we want to survive. Well, if we reveal ourselves, it's a sign of good faith. It's obvious we mean them no harm. You've got a point. We'll make contact. Yes, but first, let's make sure. We've got some security between them and us. Like a canyon. They're tracking us. ground. as a friend than as an enemy. Hello! 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 We don't want to fight with you! We want to be friends! But he doesn't. We're not your enemy! Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Eagle One requesting clearance for touchdown. Eagle One, you're cleared for touchdown. Thanks, Alpha. Do you have another Eagle standing by for me? Ready for liftoff as soon as you clear the launch pad, Tony. Thanks, Helena. Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Moonbase Alpha to Commander Koenig. Yasko, get that planet on the screen. Where is it? Should be there. It's got to be. Check your scanners. Now, registering. The sensors are giving no readings. Eagle 4, ready for liftoff. Abort, Eagle 4, abort. What? Abort. I've got to get the commander off that planet. Tony, we don't know where that planet is.
They don't like the water. Maybe they can't swim. Stay here. Listen to me! Please listen to me! We've no reason to fight! Don't let them make us kill each other! Listen to me! Even if they can't understand us, they must know we want to talk. Why won't they talk? Maybe it's their nature to kill, not talk. Well, that river gives us some breathing space. Maybe they're leaving. No, just trying to figure out a way across. Well, it'll be a while before they catch up to us. We've got to find some way to defend ourselves. What is it, Commander? I haven't noticed any live animals. Those vines look like they have a stranglehold on that one. The plant killed the animal? Let's just say it eliminated a natural enemy. Koenig to Alpha. Koenig to Moonbase Alpha, come in Alpha. Commander Koenig, you waste valuable time. Devote yourselves to saving your lives. Why must we kill to save our lives? Because those are the rules of Blue Tongue. We will not submit to those rules. They're cruel and vicious. Cruel? Vicious? We pride ourselves on our justice, on our fairness. As proof of our fairness, we have given your adversaries abilities to match yours. Otherwise, the contest would be too one-sided. We will not fight. We will not submit to those rules. Kill or die. I thought they were against killing. Obviously, animals are a lower form of life on this planet. If we all kill each other, it's acceptable. I wonder what abilities they gave our adversaries. Three against two aren't heavy enough odds. Maybe a lion or a tiger might even out the odds. No, Maya, he'd tear you apart if you got close enough, no matter what form you took. But wait, maybe we could use your abilities to give us an edge. That way we'd know where they are at all times. Don't stay in any one place too long.
Your shoulder. Come on, sit down. Come on. Now we know the abilities the judges of Luton gave to two of them. Hmm. One they gave the strength to tear mountains apart, and the other they made a transport. Yeah, one second the other side of the river, the next second this side. If he could transport, why didn't he do it again to escape? Perhaps they're only permitted to use their abilities once. Yeah, it could be. Anyway, thanks. Nothing to thank me for. All right, then I thank the bird for its keen eyesight and the lion for its terrible roar. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry, but ah. I've got to stop the bleeding. Don't look so sad. It doesn't hurt that much. Be careful when you move. Okay, Mom. I won't get it infected, and I won't get any dirt in it. <laughs> what you need is some rest. Right, and some peace and quiet. I'm afraid we're not going to get much of that. Better take that with us. Mm. Give it to me. It's too heavy for you. Don't waste time arguing. I'm getting no reading on my sensors. That was expected, wasn't it? Well, how about yours? Still negative. And I still think you're out of your mind. Well, when I approach the planet, or at least when I think I'm in the area of the planet, I'll check in. Be careful, Tony. Oh, you never know. I might even be lucky and make visual contact when I get there. You should have a co-pilot with you. No, I'm not letting anybody else share this risk, Helena. Remember, you said you'd give yourself a good margin for safety. What I'm remembering is that I told John and Mara I'd be right back for them. better rest. We can't stray too far from where the Eagle touched down. When it comes back, we've got to be there. You're getting weaker. What you need is some nourishment. Oh, sure. How about some pheasant under glass, asparagus hollandaise, topped off with chocolate mousse and cafe espresso? Some broth, maybe chicken, rabbit, beef. Sure. All we need for that are the ingredients. And on this planet, there are no such ingredients anymore. Well, maybe they didn't kill off all the animals. Not every animal's a plant eater. Have you seen any around? The only bird we saw was you. If you take another form, don't stay in any one place too long. We mustn't give them a chance to get at you. We also need some more weapons. That lance isn't going to be enough. Uh. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. 
Why don't you do this? to check out the area. Uh-huh. There's a long line of animal skeletons all along the rim. Looks like they're in formation. Battle formation. Could be that, that this is where the animals made their last stand. The animals wiped out all the plant life in that area to protect their rear. Can you imagine the battle that must have taken place on the, on the rim of this cliff? And the animals lost. Yeah. Better check out our friends below, huh? Yeah. There's nothing I can see from here. Why don't you take a closer look, huh? Right.
are supposed to be resting. Yeah, I will as soon as I finish this. I had a great bird's eye view of the valley, but I only saw one of them. I'd sure like to know where the other one is. On the valley floor somewhere, I imagine. What are you making? It's a bolo. In ancient times on Earth, bush natives invented a very effective weapon. The bolo. Can I help? Yeah, you can get some more rocks about this size. No, make them a little bigger and round. Are you all right? Well, it only hurts when I laugh. Hmm? It's an old Earth joke. It's not funny. Well, it was on Earth. Fifty years ago. Okay, then tell me some old Saigon jokes. I'm sorry, Maya. I didn't mean to bring up sad memories. The memories aren't sad. Except at the end. Saikon was a happy place. That's why most of us wouldn't leave it, even when we knew we faced disaster. Your brother left. My brother, like mentor my father, was on Saikon's High Scientific Council. He knew there was no hope when our planet began to boil. So my brother and a thousand others went off into uncharted space preferring to take their chances than face your death. Did they find another planet? We never heard from him again. Or any of the others who built spaceships after that and left. As Sycon's temperature kept rising. If the breakup of the planet was inevitable, why didn't Metter leave? My father's dream was to restore Sycon, to make it the beautiful planet it once was. Nobody shared his dream. They all left, preferring to take their chances in the unknown. But if every, every scientist on Sycon knew what was coming, why did Mentor remain so stubborn? He wasn't only stubborn. He was in love. My mother's tomb was on Saikon, and he wouldn't leave her. What about you? Oh, he tried to make me go, but I wouldn't. I couldn't let him stay alone. He should have made you go. You don't understand. He really believed he could perform the miracle of restoring Saikon. Oh, and I got caught up in that dream. Mentor was a great scientist. And he was my father. I knew he could do anything. I don't see anything. Yeah. <sighs> Must you keep at it? Firepower, Maya. In a combat situation, there's nothing as persuasive as firepower. What about you, Commander? Did you have any brothers? 
sisters? Mother, father? You had nobody? I had a wife. Had? Weren't there any wars on Saigon? No. Unlike your planet, we were all of one race, one religion, one government. Our planet was so rich in resources that there was no separation of classes. In 1987, all the hatreds on Earth between races, classes, and religions all came to a head. The war was global and awful. It was finally the war to end all wars because the survivors realized that if there was another one, it would be the, the end of humanity. You mean people killed people just because they were different from each other? That's disgusting. The one virtue of that war, war can have a virtue is that prejudice was wiped out. People realized if, if they were going to survive, they would have to work together, accept each other for what they were. So we began to create a brand new, wonderful civilization. But it was too late for my wife. She was a casualty of that war. What was she like? His weapon is still there, but I don't see him. He's got to be down there. I don't see him anywhere. Wind's blowing in this direction. Good. Come on. Come on, let's move back. is right. We've just discovered the third ability given them by the judges of Luton. We may not be able to see him, but he's up here somewhere. Maya, you could pick up a scent. Go find her, Maya. Alpha. Alpha Deagle 4, go ahead, Tony. 
I'm close to the planet, or where it should be. You don't have visual. Can you see it? Nope. But I do have you on the monitor. Do you have me on the screen? Yes. How about the planet? We'll try again. Yasko? Tony, we can't get a fix on that planet. And you can't stay out there forever. Oh, yes, I can. Send another eagle to refuel me. Watch out. Look out. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Shh. Hey. Oh. Are you better now? What'd I do? Pass out? No. You fell asleep. As long as I was only delirious. I'd hate to have recurring nightmares like that again. <sighs> All right, if it'll make you happy. You were delirious. That bad, huh? It has to be cleaned. I've got to find some water. Treasures of Luton, free her, and I will go down to him. We will not interfere. I will let him kill me. No. She can keep that form for only an hour. She will be crushed. Free her, and he can kill me. We cannot. You're the judges of Luton. You can do anything. It is against the rules of Luton. Wait! Please, please wait! Wait! Center. Refueling Eagle coming alongside. 
Refueling Eagle is carrying relief pilot. I don't want a relief pilot. All I want is refueling. Don't be stubborn, Tony. Let your relief take over. No way, Helena. One of us taking this risk is all that Alpha can afford. Tony, according to our computer, you're drifting very close to our recorded position of that planet. According to my instruments, I'm uncomfortably close. That's what I said. Too close. I'm still hoping for a visual. Give yourself more room, Tony. You know the slightest miscalculation. You'll crash. Well, I'm not in the mood for miscalculations, Helena. How long do you expect to stay there? Forever, if I have to. Fools! If we fight! I don't want to kill you, but I must! You... You understand me? It pleases the judges of Luton to let us communicate at the moment of combat! Let her out of the cage! She'll be crushed! It is regrettable, but necessary that you both die so that I may live. Defeated the enemy. You are free. You want to see things die? You would like everything here to die to satisfy your lust for death? Hear me! Listen! Listen to me!
Go! Go! You are free! Checked and I've rechecked Alpha. According to my inboard computer, I'm at the planet. And yet nothing. Whew. Okay, Alpha, I found the planet. John and Maya, see if you can get through. Moon base Alpha to Commander Cooney. Moon base Alpha to Commander Koenig. They're letting Alpha make contact. Anything to get rid of us before we start an uprising. Moon base Alpha to Commander Koenig. Moon base Alpha, this is Maya. Go ahead. Eagle 4 is ready to touch down if you will give your position. No need. We have visual contact. Hydroponics. Tony gave them to me. He thought that might cheer me up after our ordeal. So he gave you a plan. Well, nobody can say that uh, Tony does not have a sense of humor. <laughs> I think Tony needs to have a sense of humor retooled. Oh, I thought it was a nice gesture. I thought so, too. He could have given you a bucket of his abominable beer. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite nice. Do you want one, Helen? I'd like one. Hold it. Do me a favor. While I'm around, never pick a flower. Back to hydroponic. <laughs> <laughs> 